and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby. My original plan was to uh, continue on with our study in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians and do all of chapter 4, but I got stuck. I got stuck on verses 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and we're going to study those. And uh, in those two verses, Paul writes on stewardship. So, but before we begin that, I urge you all to, who are listening on YouTube to, to subscribe to our channel. And if you're watching on Facebook, well, like our Facebook page, which is The Gospel Minute Net Live. The Gospel Minute Live. Share with your friends. Share with your friends the Word of God. And one other thing, if you're in Geneva, New York, or in the area, or just visiting, come to St. Michael's. And join us for our Bible studies and for our liturgies. At the end of this video, I'll have a little blurb that shows you when and where to go. Alrighty, first our prayer. And our prayer today is taken from Psalm 145, verses 1 through 4 and 10 through 12. And it concerns stewardship. So, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Going on to verse 10, all your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your servants shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alrighty. St. Paul's letter, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. He writes, This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of students, stewards, that they be found faithful. Okay. So, in verse 1, a steward is someone who manages and cares for something. He writes, this is how one should regard us. And he's writing about himself, Apollos, and Peter. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So he's referring to himself, Apollos, and to Peter. But we are all called to be stewards. Stewards of the word and the glory of God. And a steward is someone who manages and cares for something. St. John Chrysostom, when writing about this epistle and these verses, writes, a steward's duty is to administer well the things that have been entrusted to him. The things of the masters are not the steward's, but the reverse. What is really, what is his, the steward's, really belongs to the master, God. St. Ambrose goes on, as you receive everything, call upon God for everything. What you have is from God. Always acknowledge that you are his debtor. And may I add my own words, you are his steward. You are called to be a steward, to call. So, now, let's go back to our psalm for just a minute. Okay? Our morning prayer. And the psalmist, King David, writes, One generation commend, shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. And later he says, To make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. So as stewards of the word of God and the glory of God, it is our responsibility to pass this on, to care for this sacred gift, this wonderful gift that we have been given, and to nurture it, in ourselves, and then to pass it on to the next generation. 
Now at St. Michael's we have a wonderful example of that and one of our Sunday school teachers, Tina. Great, great teacher. Inspired. And she is doing exactly that by passing on to the very youngest in our parish the Word of God and the glory of God. She is being a good steward. steward. Alrighty. So, now let's go to the words of Jesus for just a minute and read one of his parables. And we find that in chapter 25 of St. Matthew. So turn your Bibles to St. Matthew, chapter 25, starting at verse 14. And this is the parable of the talents. Now, a talent was a sum of money. But I want you to play a little exercise here with me. And think of it, this talent, as being how we normally would consider a talent, as a God-given gift a gift, a talent for something that we might have, okay? In the original, it's meant to be a, a sum of money. But let's go ahead and read it. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. He did something with the God-given abilities that he was given. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. He also, although entrusted with something a little less, he made something out of them. He, g he gave his re master a return on his money. So, but he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. Again, he did something with what his master had given him, what God had given him. He was a good steward. Here, I have made two, mal ta two talents more, he said. And, and his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. The man who had the one talent and hid it, hid his talents, hid, hid his gift from God. He did nothing with it. He kept it to himself. He hid it in the ground. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast, the worthless servant, into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. The word of God. So, here we have three people. Two of them took the gifts from God. Here was money, but we can think of it as in the modern sense, talents, God-given abilities, something that God has given to you and to me, 
and we're to do something with it. Do something with it. And God says, and God said to them, the master said to them, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. We will be rewarded. We will be rewarded for what we do with what God has given us, as long as we use our abilities to further the word and the glory of God. But there was one man who did nothing with it, absolutely nothing, except hide it, kept it to himself. To him, he was cast, cast away into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. So, it's up to you, up to me, to be good stewards. Stewards taking care and nurturing and passing on the Word of God and the glory of God. Amen. Okay, tomorrow, Paul goes into more about the ministry of the apostles. So, until tomorrow, may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, oh.